All right, so for anyone who happens to be listening, this is Len with the Bible Thumping Wingnut Show. This is a little bit different. The reason I'm doing this on Mixler is because uh, now typically when I do a discussion with uh, with an atheist or someone with a different worldview than when myself, when I do a discussion I, um, with uh, with an atheist or someone with a different worldview than when myself, I, do a I um. Discussion. Okay, sorry, I just had Mixler playing. I had the feedback coming through my speaker. So, <clears throat> okay, so I normally do a Google Hangout, and we were just having some technical difficulties there, but we definitely wanted to have this conversation recorded so we can at least get the audio here with Mixler. So uh, I'm talking tonight with a, a gentleman named Matt from California. He's on a Facebook group called Presuppositional Apologetics is Wrong. We met there uh, because... Uh, the Bible thumping wingnut and myself joined that group and we were very interested in it as presuppositionalists and we just want to know what is if it's wrong what makes it wrong what is what is the problem with the presuppositional apologetic and we haven't really gotten a very good answer we kind of get the typical um we kind of get the typical objections that it's it's circular and etc. So, so Matt, what is what is your primary objection to the presuppositional apologetic? Well, your my primary, primary objection, objection to, to presuppositional apologetics, apologetics, and moreover, uh, well, my apologetics is, is that it depends crucially on biblical inerrancy, on the belief that the Bible is the inerrant, infallible, inspired Word of God, and I believe that the Bible is a flawed book. And so, therefore, I believe that that cannot be part of the apologetic argument or the strategy, uh, you know, used by reforming apologists. Okay. Now, what, and so I, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Go ahead and finish. I'm sorry. And so, I believe that a much better, uh, you know, w- worldview, at least the foundations for constructing a worldview that could be used by both skeptics and Christians alike, must be sought elsewhere. And this worldview and its foundations are what I'm going to be. You know, defending and articulating tonight, though, I believe that Christians can use it also to uh, argue their case, just not presuppositionalism. Okay, uh, what is your worldview? I, I, are you an atheist? Are you a skeptic? What I guess we would we would probably agree that atheism, in and of itself, is not a worldview. At least, it's not a a complete worldview uh, because atheism comprises many different possibilities of worldviews. So are you an atheist? And if so, what is, well, I guess, what is your worldview? Well, uh, I am an atheist. Uh, my worldview is what I call presuppositional realism, though. And what this is, is that I presuppose that there is an external world outside my senses and outside my mind that my mind must necessarily interact with in order for me to build a very sound foundation for knowledge. Um, I don't presuppose atheism in any way because I think that would be dishonest. I don't think anybody can presuppose atheism, though. I believe that one must study the world and then come to the conclusion on whether or not a divine being or more exists or not, though. So, in my judgment, atheism would... Uh, presuppositional realism and not the foundation part. So I, I would also encourage Christians to you know follow along, along too because you know what many evangelical Christians do is they also use this approach though they're presuppositional realists and they 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 arrive at the conclusion that God exists that the Bible is God's word, it's a revelation of mankind, that Jesus rose from the dead, that he died to atone for the sins of mankind, and that the Bible is very likely to be the word of God. It's very likely to be God's revelation to mankind about how to uh, to get to know him and uh, fulfill the plan that he has for uh, people. And do you think that that's wrong to presuppose that? Presuppose uh, the 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 existence of the Bible, the existence of God. You believe it's wrong to presuppose that? I do. Okay, but so when you say you're a presuppositional realist, are you saying that your presupposition is the reality? It's the reality of a world that exists outside my senses, outside my mind, yes. On what basis do you presuppose that reality is real outside of your senses? 
Well, I presuppose that there is a reality outside of my head, and uh, I presuppose that there is, exists a real world there because it's the only way that I can construct a foundation of knowledge, though. Uh, I observe the world through my senses, um, sight, uh, you know, sound, smell, and I'm able to to know that this is an adequate basis for knowledge because it allows for the possibility that I can construct a base of knowledge. And the base of knowledge rests on being able to construct arguments, though. Okay, so are you, would, it be, would it be fair to say then that you're an empiricist? That you... uh, not exactly. Okay. How is that different um, than empiricism? Uh, how that's different from empiricism is that empiricism usually starts with uh, skepticism though. Empiricism usually starts with uh, skepticism that uh, nature is uniform, that nature, that uh, the human mind can really know anything. I mean, I'm, I'm actually paraphrasing what I've read from uh, you know, Hume's uh, inquiry. Uh, and uh, people call him an empiricist, but the fact of the matter is that Hume was also very skeptical though. I mean, Hume would argue that if we saw, you know, for example, billiard balls uh, hitting against each other, uh, he would argue that there's no possible way of inferring cause. You can't infer, uh, I mean, there's no possible one way of observing cause and effect though. He didn't know how the inference is justified. And so that, I, I don't know how he was able to construct empiricism from that though, but uh, for me, the empiricism, as I understand it, is the belief that only experience provides the basis for knowledge, though. I don't believe that. I believe that what is needed is both reason and experience working together, could join together in order to construct an adequate knowledge base. Reason and experience. Okay, yes. so therefore what I experience is true? What I experience and what I reason to uh, as truth is therefore true? I could join together, uh, yes. If you, if you test them with the laws of logic, yes. Then if you could, if you test um, the information from your sensory experience, also combined with uh, how you construct arguments, and you test it for logical consistency, then yes, you know, that that could be. You, you could judge that to be true. Okay. Well, then, Matt, <clears throat> what you need to know then is that in my experience, and on the basis of of the reasoning that I've been. That I, that I use and employ that's been given to me by God, Christianity is true, and the Bible is true, the triune God of the universe is true, the life, death, burial, and resurrection of Christ is true also, because I experience it, and because I've reasoned such. You, you've experienced the resurrection of Christ? You've experienced uh, the existence of God? I mean, you've experienced all these things? No, but what I'm saying is that my experience as a Christian, matches everything that the Bible says I should experience. Furthermore, okay, you, furthermore um, okay. my experience with unbelievers such as yourself matches that experience. For example, when Romans 1 says that you suppress the truth in your unrighteousness, I experience that too. So that, therefore, is true as well. Okay, uh, okay will you be, more, be willing to supply examples of how you experience this, though? Well, I'm experiencing it right now. You profess to be an atheist. The Bible says the fool in his, has said in his heart there is no God. And Romans 1 says that um, what God has, uh, what can be known about God, he has made evident to all people. But they suppress the truth in their own righteousness because they love their sin. And so that's what I experience when I talk to people like yourself. And so therefore, okay, well, I, I... my experience and my reasoning to come to the conclusion that Christianity is true is therefore true. Okay, well, I, I've had different experiences, though. I've, I've had, uh, I've reasoned differently, though. I've reasoned differently from, um, based on my own worldview, and I have attained what could be, what sure, I consider but, to be uh, logically consistent knowledge. Right, but um, the law of non-contradiction is true. You would agree with that, right? I would agree with that. Okay. I mean, I've, well, I've, well I've if, if, if your experience contradicts my experience, then I am right and you're wrong. Okay, well, that would, is something that you would need to prove, and I would try no, to... No, I'm experiencing uh, it. I don't need to prove it. It's, it's, it's true in my your experience. experience of law, your, your experience of law of non-contradiction right now? Well, you're contradicting me, and what I'm saying is true because I experience it, and I've used my reason to determine that it's true. And you're contradicting it, so therefore your, your worldview is false. Well, I, I strongly disagree with you. On what basis? Well, on, on the basis of 
you know, my experience on the basis of um, my ability to reason with my experience, my ability to construct, you know, logically sound and logically cogent arguments, though. Uh, I've done a, a lot of studying of the Bible, though, and my studying of the Bible has led me to conclude that it's a very flawed book, though. Right, but you're wrong because you're contradicting, well, you're contradicting truth. You're contradicting truth that in my experience, you've, you, because you conceded that what I experience is true and, and I'm able to reason to it, and you're contradicting it, so therefore you're wrong. Actually, I disagree with you. It doesn't matter. I think you're reasoning. In, I think you're uh, reasoning inaccurately, though. It doesn't matter what you think I because think it, I think you're, it, it contradicts. Uh, and the law of non-contradiction is true. Things can't be both a and not a at the same time, in the same way, in the same place. I believe. Well, on the, uh, I'm arguing that your reasoning is wrong. Your reasoning on is what accurate. Basis? Though. Uh, the basis of, is a flawed Bible. Well, <laughs> again. Um, my experience, I've experienced the truth of the Bible. I've experienced the, How? well, as I said earlier, um, everything that the Bible says that it describes, Example? that it describes what happens in the life of a Christian and what happens in the life of an unbeliever. Um, I've experienced those things. I, when I test my experience to the truths of scripture and they match up, I have no reason not to believe it. You have to, wait. wait you're, 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 so you're using the Bible as a standard, even though I've argued it's a flawed. You don't even want to discuss the, the you know, the flaws that I have in mind, though. Um, well, it doesn't matter because you're contradicting me, and you're wrong. <laughs> well, I, I believe that you're, you're contradicting me, and you're wrong. Uh, Great. So now what? Well, I mean, that's just we can what, I've, what I've done here is I've uh, in in a using a bit of a reductio ad absurdum. I've demonstrated how your worldview just crumbles under scrutiny. See how it just falls apart because all I have to do is say my experience contradicts your experience and they can't both be true. But if my experience is true, yours is automatically false. So we've falsified your worldview now. So I have no I, reason I, to believe um, anything further that you say with regard to my worldview. Well, then, well, then we're, uh, we, we don't have much of a discussion anymore, do we? Right. I, I mean, I, so, I'm, not trying to, so, I'm not trying to be rude, but I, don't see, I, don't, I just don't see any point of going on, though. Well... I agree. I agree with you. Your your worldview has been uh, falsified. Mine has been affirmed. I don't believe that. Well, again, it contradicts me. Love non contradiction is true. So. You're, well, you're 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 being vague. I mean, no offense, but I think you're being vague. You haven't ext uh, you haven't ex given an example. I experienced experience. myself being very clear, and again, you're contradicting me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I. You know something. I, I, I'm, I, using, I'm using your standard here, Matt. I'm using your standard here, and you're getting frustrated when I'm I'm, I'm using your worldview to demonstrate the f how absolutely you, you don't even know my worldview. Oh, sure it is. You don't even know my worldview that well. You said I've only ex I only articulated a part of it though. You didn't okay, so, you didn't even so ask me about experiences. Why don't you clarify it? Well, thank you. I, I think that if we if I if I clarified to begin with a lot more, if you asked for a clarification, we'd be a lot further. If okay. If you had explained it clearly in the first place, it would have avoided this. Okay, whole thing I apologize. In the first place, okay, right? I, I apologize. I apologize for not expl have explained it earlier, though. See, my belief is that when I talk about experience, what I'm talking about is sensory perception, though. What I'm talking about is information that we glean from the physical world around us, though. The very fact that you know, we, we can observe objects, that's only possible because you know objects contain matter. Matter is able to absorb and emit light because it contains atoms. And the atomic structure of atoms you know, makes that all possible. The atomic structure of our brains makes it possible that we're able to you know, acquire knowledge, though. We would not be able to think if there, if there weren't chemical reactions going on inside of our brain cells and among our brain cells, though. So, th so that's what I'm arguing about when it comes to, you know, the, the world of sensory experience, though. What we experience with our senses, you know, the information that we gain from our senses, though, uh, you know, the world of matter, uh, energy, uh, space, and time is what I'm referring to, though. See, the fact of the matter is that uh, you, you, cl you claim to experience that uh, everything the Bible says to you is true. I can, you know, something in my experience, everything the Bible says is false. I mean, the Bible contains discrepancies. It, does, it, uh, it contains errors. It contains failed prophecies. So, you know, something I can't uh, possibly use that as a basis or standard. I would be intellectually dishonest if I did. I mean, even if I was a Christian, I could not pre presuppose that the Bible is true, though. I mean, it would be very dishonest of me. Even, even if I was a Bible-believing Christian, I could not use the Bible as a presupposition, okay, though. But Matt, I, I want you to realize that in the last two minutes you have done nothing to clarify or um, uh, 
You've done nothing to clarify your position. You've said nothing that makes me think that there's anything different about your worldview than what I just refuted. Not a single thing. Even even my discussion of atoms and how mm. atoms absorb and emit light, even the fact that it matters that uh, our eyes contain cells that are ca capable of absorbing and emitting light, though, the yeah, fact so that what? you know, light attracts... Uh, so what? what uh, um, on, on what basis do you trust your vision? On what basis do I trust my vision? E uh, easy. The fact that matters is I have reliable senses. How do you know that? My reliable... Uh, the, the fact that matters is that I have the cognitive ability to construct you know, a largely sound and also largely cogent arguments. So, that's the ultimate justification, no, though. That's, well, that's your what, argument is circular. Is you're, you're essentially reasoning that How? your reasoning is valid. No, I'm you not. use your senses to verify your senses? How do you no. how do you verify the truth that your of your uh, how do you verify that what your eyes are telling you match ex a, a reality external of yourself? Easy, my ability to construct you know, logically sound arguments, though. Well, you're assuming logic. On what basis are you assuming logic? And that's begging the question. It's not answering it. No, no, no. Logical consistency, though. I'm using the, lo lo the laws of logic to construct logically sound arguments, though. No. But you understand you still haven't answered the question. What, how, well, I haven't how, answered the question. how do you know that what your eyes are telling you match the external reality happening outside of yourself? My, uh, as I said before, my ability to construct logically sound arguments and test them for logical consistency. Test it against what? Uh, I you know, test against the uh, uh, outside world, though. I begin with the presuppositions, and then I gain information. I construct a, a you know, knowledge hierarchy based on my uh, on my propositions, and I test that uh, knowledge hierarchy for consistency, though. So do you believe the laws of logic are man-made? Do I believe the laws of logic are man-made? I, I, I don't know what that means, though. Well, where do they come from? I believe that the, you know, the laws of logic are you know, semantic devices that we have constructed in order to account for patterns that, uh, that occurred in our sensory perception, though. You know, orderly patterns. That doesn't say anything as to where they came from. You're just describing what they are. I asked you where they came from. What is their origin? Did the laws, What's the origin did of, the laws of logic exist before mankind? No, I don't believe so. You don't? I'm, I'm skeptical. Uh, well, I'm skeptical though. I mean, uh, it's possible that they might have, but you know, some I, I don't know. It's, it's possible that a divine okay, being may have so, created them. So though. you're saying that before mankind, the universe could have simultaneously simultaneously existed and not existed at the same time in the same way. I doubt it. So then, man didn't invent the laws of logic. That's not a product of man's of the mind of man. I think man I think man kind of constructed it though. I I think man kind of constructed the laws of logic as constructs, kind of constructs. So are you saying that man mankind discovered them? Uh, I'm not saying that mankind discovered them. I'm saying that mankind constructed them though as as useful uh, devices okay, though. Okay, so but you're saying then on that basis then it is possible before mankind observed anything that the universe could have simultaneously existed and not existed in the same time and in the same way i'm i'm skeptical well yeah i mean your whole worldview re, re, uh, reduces to skepticism i mean that's the problem and, and skepticism is self-refuting are you skeptical Ow. of your skepticism no i'm not so you're sure of your skepticism you see how I'm it, confident uh, my skepticism. Okay, so you, you don't see the logical contradiction there. You're confident of your skepticism. No. Either way, it's a, yes, either way you contradict yourself. If you're you you can't how? be consistent with skepticism because both ways you contradict how? yourself. You're how? confident in your skepticism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I'll just let the audi I'll just uh, let uh, the uh, audience you know decide on that one. If you can't, uh, dude. I'm not claiming certainty, though. I mean, I'm confident, but that's my own subjective confidence, though. I mean, I'm confident, but but then, but you know, so I'm not claiming certainty, though. Are you, you, see, that's, are you that's, absolutely that's, confident? That, I'm relatively confident. Relative I mean, to what? I, I'm relative to my own presuppositions and and the laws of logic that I use. I, I mean, I'm, I'm I'm quite confident, though. I have a very strong suspicion. It was, it's, you know, you know there, there's actually a Christian apologist named Matt Slick who uses the uh, presuppositional argument. Uh, do you know Matt yeah, Slick? I know who he is. I'm aware of him, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, uh, he operates the Karm website. Yeah, Karm.org. He uses that very same kind of argument, though. He he uh, he tries to get uh, um, skeptics like myself to say, well, have the laws of logic existed for all eternity? Have they existed in uh, every uh, part of uh, space for uh, for e in every moment of time? And I would say to him, you know, I, I don't know. I, I have a strong suspicion, but I have no way of proving the, uh, proof that they've existed, though. And then I would argue, uh, you know, Matt Slick doesn't have a transcendent, uh, transcendental argument. He has, at best, a you know, a, you know, a cogent argument, or uh, no, an inductive argument that he's trying to make cogent, though. But he doesn't have a transcendental argument, though. I'm not sure I follow you. Uh, I, you know, actually, you know, someone I had had to do. A, let, let, let me write a piece on it for for a blog that I have. Then you know, I'll, I'll send the link if you're interested. You can see make makes uh, better sense of it than I'm articulating it okay, here. Okay, well. But you, again, you're assuming the laws of logic. If we, we'll just get back on topic here, and logic is is okay. the principle of reasoning. Would you agree with that? Yes, it is. Okay, so in the properties of logic, you would agree are immaterial, universal, and unchanging. Would you agree with that? I can't affirm that with certainty. I have a strong suspicion that they are. I can't affirm that with certainty, so, though. Do you, you think that it's possible there's somewhere in the universe you can go and get me two pounds of logic? I'm skeptical. Okay. All right. <laughs> you don't, you, and you don't see a problem with that. Because no. if, if the laws of logic can change, then you can't rely on anything. If, the laws, if, if there's anything in the laws of logic can, that can change... You have no reason to believe anything about your sense perception. See, I believe that the laws of logic um, only comport with the Christian worldview and nowhere else because the God of the universe, who is immaterial, universal, and unchanging, uh, logic only comports with his mind. Logic, which is also how immaterial, you, universal, and unchanging. How, how do you know that God's not deceiving you, though? Well, how would God deceive me? Well, God could be lying to you. I mean, he lied to the Israelites. Well, you just said that the Bible is full of contradictions. Exactly. The Bible says that... Uh, you so know, why would you believe uh, God that? God is not man. He can... Why would I believe Why would what? you believe that the, when the Bible says that God lied to the Israelites, why would you now accept... Why would you abandon your original premise that the Bible is not reliable and then turn to the Bible to try and contradict my position? You're refuting yourself. Well, if you're no, if I'm you're going to reject I'm, I'm refuting you. Gonna, <laughs> I'm no, refuting if you're going to if you're going to reject I'm... the Bible, I'm not going to allow you to use that as as a tool against me. Oh, you're not going to allow me to use as a tool against me? No, uh, because... I... If you don't mind my asking, how are you not going to allow me to? I mean, I, I mean, are, are you going to uh, grab me by the shoulders? No, and just, no uh, I'm, I'm simply <laughs> going to show you how you are abandoning your own worldview to try and refute mine. You, to refute my worldview, you have to re you have to reject your own and accept mine. So I'm going to point out your logical be... inconsistencies every time you do that. But if, but if, I, but if I accept your worldview, I would be intellectually dishonest. Well, I believe you're intellectually dishonest now because the Bible says the fool has said in his heart there is no God and that everybody knows that God exists and they suppress the truth in their unrighteousness. So I, I already believe that about you. Well, then if, if I'm being intellectually dishonest, though, then there's, there's no point in having any more conversation, though. Okay. I mean, wouldn't you agree? No, well, I mean, if you, if you want to end it here, I'm perfectly satisfied with the outcome of this. I mean, the, the way okay, I see it, fine, you're but, the one uh, holding the shovel, digging your own grave. I mean, if you want to stop the digging, you feel free to do so, but I'll, I'll keep, let you keep on digging as long as you're willing to stay on the line. Well, you know, but I don't think you understand something, though. Even if I was a Christian, even if I believed that the Bible was the Word of God, even if I believed that Jesus Christ was you know, risen from the dead, and even if I accepted him as, as my personal Lord and Savior, I still cannot presuppose that the Bible well, you uh, can't, you can't true. account for your own presuppositions as it is, Matt. I think I can. I believe I can. Well, though. I believe okay. that you misunderstood. Me, though. You still haven't explained how you know you can trust how how you can trust that your sensory percep perception is giving you a, giving you an ac accurate feedback on the world that exists outside of your own independent mm -hmm. um, uh, reality. How do you know what you experience in your mind is is indeed what's happening in an in, in a reality independent of you? Easy, as I, as I said before, my ability to construct 
uh, you know, logically sound arguments. My ability to construct uh, you know, logically cogent arguments, though. That doesn't. That's begging the question. That's not answering the question. How is it begging because the question? Because you're assuming though? you're How assuming logic again. You're assuming logic to justify logic. You're assuming reason to justify your reasoning. You're appealing. Everything is How? appealing internally. You're not appealing to anything external of yourself that can verify any of these claims that you make. How do you know you're not a brain in a vat? Well, the reason why is because if I was a brain in a vat, I would consider it uh, impossible to reason, to reason How logically, do you know though. It would be impossible to reason logically if you were a brain in a vat. Have you I, ever had the experience of being a brain in a vat? Not that I know of, no. I, I can't imagine it to be true. I believe it would be logically in, uh, incoherent, though. I suspect it would but, be. But, um,. You believe it's possible? I believe it's possible, okay. yes. So how do you know? Well, how I'm do you very know doubtful. Not? Because I won't be able to construct logically cogent arguments, though. I would not be able to construct well, logically sound arguments, though. what if the person though. who was programming your brain made you think that it was logically possible? If you were programmed as such so that you believed that which, um, that which you were believing was logically possible. How would you know the difference? I how would yeah. I know the difference? You know, some, I'm not sure. Exactly. Exactly. So you have no basis for your presuppositions, Matthew. And that's why I want to have these conversations with you and with other people. Because while you um, do all of these mental gymnastics to try to suppress the truth about God and him sending his son, Jesus Christ, to die for sinners such as me, but you have to realize that there's going to come a day of accounting, a day of reckoning, where you're, everyone is going to stand before God. Me, you, everyone, and give an account. And if you stand in your own righteousness, as the Bible says, you are without excuse. And you'll be cast into hell for eternity unless you repent and turn to Christ. I want, I want to give you a Bible verse. I know you reject it, but I'm going to read it to you anyway. No, Lynn, Lynn. Can I, can I just say something before sure, you read it, do. though? If I... If I if I stand before the judgment of Christ, I would say, Jesus, please, I beg you to throw me in I know hell. you would. You know, I something... know you would. Oh, oh good, good. I'm, I know I'm you glad would. we agree on that. Because that's I mean... exactly what the scripture says. You affirm the truth of scripture. It's not word for word, but that is what the scripture affirms. That unless unless God, because the, the hatred that mankind holds in his heart toward his creator is so strong, I believe that if in 10,000 years the gates of hell were opened up and God emptied it and said it's you can you can come and be with me or go back to hell everyone would march right back into hell that's how because that's exactly what jesus said men love the darkness and hate the light because their deeds are evil so and this is the thing this is why i'm a presuppositionalist because because of your faulty and errant presuppositions that you hold against scripture all the evidence that i give you for the truth of the existence of God, the reliability of Scripture, you're just going to look at them through your presuppositions that it cannot be true. I cannot accept anything supernatural. I cannot accept that the Bible is true. So why would I give you evidence when your presuppositions won't allow you to even uh, look at those, let, not even from a state of neutrality? You can't even look at those things from a state of neutrality because your hatred for God is so strong. And that's true of every unbeliever, atheist, Muslim, Buddhist, whatever. So if so if if uh, if nothing can convince you if you if you if you're pro standing here professing that when you stand before God you will ask for hell, I say well congratulations you just proved the truth of Scripture. <laughs> you know so oh, so uh, let me get this right though. So you're you're relying on a prediction that yep. Jesus gave. And this is the same Jesus who told his followers that, uh, well, some of you standing here will not uh, taste uh, death until you see the uh, kingdom is coming, though. Well, that yes, didn't happen has. yet. That it hasn't happened, happened in, for 2000. It happened in How? AD 70 with the destruction of the temple and the sacking of Jerusalem. Also, no. you're a preterist. No, partial preterist. I, I, I believe that that, I'm not a partial preterist, but I believe that that preteristic interpretation of Matthew 24 and the, the parallel accounts in Luke and Mark are true, yes. You know something? 
I saw the same thing with hero camping, though. You're gauging in cognitive, di- cognitive dissonance. Well, you're taking a failed prophecy and you're retooling it in order to make it uh, that a rationalization. That does my feelings to tell me I have cognitive dissonance when you don't know you're a brain in a vat, man. I'm not trying to. When, when, you're, when a brain I'm, I'm in not a vat to tells feelings. me I have cognitive dissonance, that doesn't exactly hurt my feelings. I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. Look, look, I have a, I have a great deal of respect for you. I mean, you've you've always been a very civil person to me. I mean, you're not a jerk. You're not name calling me or anything like that. I mean, you're not being. I've had presuppositions who name call mm-hmm. me, who mocked me, and quite frankly, I, I don't want to have anything to do with them because I think they're being rude yeah. to me, though. No, and and uh, I, I, mean, I appreciate I, that because I, I you know I know that I don't I'm not always respectful. I, I sometimes you know I sometimes uh-huh. do repay evil for evil. Um, but when you came to me and said you wanted to have an honest discussion, I didn't get the sense that you were looking uh-huh. to sling mud at me. So that's why I wanted to have this conversation oh, no, no, no. with you, and that's why I won't have this conversation with, uh, for instance, Robert Batty, who. Um, is doing everything he can to figure out who I am, where I live, where I work, and things like that. So, okay, um, that's why I've blocked him on every medium now on on the internet. But he seems to find back doors. So, um, but but what I want to what I want to share with you out of scripture um, before we were having before the discussion went off on that is verses from okay. um, uh, Second Timothy. Okay. Chapter 2, verses 24 and 25, it says, A servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all and able to teach, patient in humility, correcting those who are in opposition, if God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth. Um, I believe in verse 25 what that's saying is that, um, and you know as a presuppositionalist that I agree and I affirm the statement that um, the proof that God exists is that without him you cannot know anything. And the scripture is very clear in this in this statement until you repent you cannot have a knowledge of the truth um but because you love your sin and i don't know why i don't know uh um and i'm not saying that you're like the worst possible person that you could be i don't believe that i believe that uh when when the bible uh, talks about the for instance the doctrine of total depravity all that means is that um that every aspect of our being our thoughts our reasoning our intellect everything is stained with uh tainted with the stain of original sin and so therefore what we have is the noetic effect of the fall which basically means this that i cannot reason you into heaven i can't sh- give you a line of breadcrumb evidence that leads to christ and then you can look at a split make a decision uh, the Spirit of God has to do a work in your life to convert you because God in his mercy, he, he, he recognizes that man of his own volition would never choose him. So God in his mercy will choose those who call out to him. So the Bible says, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That, and that's what I would urge you to do, Matt, because until then, you're going to have this absurd worldview that says, I don't know if I'm a brain in a vat. I don't know if uh, if I can truly trust my reasons. I don't know if I can if I can reliably trust the presupposition that I have. I know that my presuppositions about the Bible are true. I know it with 100% confidence. I'm absolutely certain of it. And um, I have no reason to believe otherwise. Uh, but you have nothing Actually, more than a, a reasonable certainty with a dash of skepticism. You know, you mischaracterize my position, though. You said that I cannot possibly believe that the Bible is true. I cannot possibly accept that the resurrection of, of Jesus is true. I cannot possibly uh, believe uh, anything about the Bible okay, is true. So That's if, not true. If I, could, if, if I could prove all of these things to you, would you repent and turn to Christ and serve him the rest of your life? I would acknowledge that Christianity is true, but I wouldn't repent, though. I would acknowledge that Christianity is truth claims. I mean, I consider myself an intellectually honest person. I would acknowledge that the Bible is reliable. I would acknowledge that G- Jesus died, and I would acknowledge that his death was to atone for the sins of mankind. I would acknowledge that he uh, was risen uh, from the dead, though. But you also, there's nothing that could possibly persuade me that Jehovah God loves me personally, just like there's nothing who, that could persuade me that Allah uh, loves me personally. So if I hate Jehovah, then I have to hate all. I have to hate you know hate Thor, and I have to hate you know all the you know deities that um, you know mankind has ever believed in, especially those that are all powerful, all knowing, and, so, and yeah, literally well, all loving. Though those gods don't exist. So, um, you know, the God is in the heavens. He He alone is the Creator, and uh, the the 
the scripture says in the Psalms, I believe it's Psalm ninety eight, says the gods of the nations are the, are the the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord is in the heavens. So, um, mm. so those gods don't exist. So, you wouldn't be hating anything to hate those. And in fact, uh, uh, there's a reason <laughs> that you don't see atheists on YouTube um, at war against Allah. You know, there's a reason you don't see atheists on YouTube at war against. Um, uh, Krishna or Vishnu or um, any of the 300 million Hindu gods. There's a reason that nobody, when they when they hit their thumb with a hammer, says Buddha. No, oh, they proclaim Jesus Christ. They blat their hatred for him is so deep that when they're in pain, they blaspheme his name out of anger. So, oh, I, I I've cur I've cursed Allah before. I've cur I've cursed Muhammad well, they don't before. Exist. I mean, you can't curse something that doesn't exist. But you're accusing me of hitting God, but that, that, that's like hitting Darth Vader, though. I, I, mean, I mean, no offense to you, but you know, you're you're, you're, saying, you're saying something to me that's completely meaningless, though. I I, I hate a God. I I hate uh, a being who I believe that the Hebrews constructed out of you know their own mythology that they inherited from uh, you know Mesopotamians and you know Mesop Mesopotamian myth mythology, though. I mean, it, it, it doesn't mean anything to it's me. Funny I, if, I, you know, it's so I, meaningless, you know, and yet you respond. Mm hmm. <laughs> okay, you asked ask me to respond. respond. You, you chose to respond. I, I, you said, I, I, I find I, I these things meaningless, and then you go on talking about how meaningful it is to you. Um, or or, or, you, you, or I, not how meaningful it is, but you go on as ascribing meaning to it. So again, it's just another demonstration of how self-refuting your position is. Okay? I have a question for you. Um, okay, here's the thing, though. Suppose I was to acknowledge that my worldview okay. is flawed. Okay, so suppose suppose I agree with you. Um, would you allow me to to study more, and maybe we can have a future conversation like this, like like we had today, when, when I when I feel that I, I when I feel that I'm much better studied. I don't claim to have perfect knowledge. I mean, obviously, right. I, I I've, I'm not no. claiming to have perfect knowledge at all, but or I don't I don't claim to, to prove that I, I have a completely logically coherent worldview because I uh, you know I don't I don't have all the knowledge of the world though. I, I'm not uh, the world's greatest expert on any and every right. topic and, that you can imagine. And that's, I'm that's, not, that's the point, and, and I would love to have a conversation with you again. I found this to be um, pleasant and enjoyable, and um, but but what you just huh? said there sure. is so key, Matt. You said um, <clears throat> I don't claim to have all knowledge. Let's say let's say for example, Matt, you have if you had one percent of all the knowledge in the entire universe, you would say that's a lot, right? Huh? Yeah, I, I can imagine right. so, certainly a lot. So, though. I mean, and here's here's why, as a Christian presuppositionalist, I say that you can't know anything without without God. Um, if if you have one percent of all of the knowledge in the known universe, the one percent that you have could be contradicted by the ninety nine percent that you don't have. So the only way that you can truly know anything is to have revelation from someone who does know everything and that's god now the importance of this is that we're made in his image we're, we're made in his image so that we can know things we can observe things i'm not when when i say that it's impossible for you to know anything i'm speaking logically here i'm not saying matthew you're an idiot and you don't know anything i'm not saying that at all i'm saying that logically mm -hmm. if you reject the god of the bible you can't know ever you can't know anything mm -hmm. because the knowledge you have could be contradicted by the knowledge you don't have uh, myself on the other hand as a christian when i read the truths of scripture that talk about how god gave me a sound mind in uh second timothy 1 7 and how i'm made in his image and that i have a uh, i have a perfectly logically coherent reason to accept those truths uh -huh. and therefore i can make certain knowledge claims with a hundred percent certainty again i'm not saying i do have all knowledge and you don't i'm saying you and i have the same knowledge but God is the source of both of them. The difference is, I accept it, and you don't. Sure. Uh, can I ask you a question? Uh, in First Peter, there is a command to give a reason for your faith uh, to all those right. who ask. I, I mean, uh, would you be willing been, to uh, do that to me, though? That's what I believe but, I've but, been doing. The reason that I'm giving you is okay. that you have no reason to trust yourself. You have no reason to trust your own no. worldview. You you should you should turn to Christ because it just logically makes sense. Be, uh, under the on the basis that never, your own worldview yeah. is so self-refuting and flawed, 
And every worldview outside of Christ, every worldview that doesn't start with God, reduces to absurdity. I've seen it demonstrate. I haven't done it personally. I haven't talked to a whole lot of people outside of atheism, Roman Catholicism, and um, things like that, just because I'm not exposed to Muslims and things like that where I live. Um, but I've seen it done. Uh, I've, I've done it with, with Mormons. Every worldview outside of the Christian worldview, the triune God, uh, for, uh, uh, is the only thing that can account for the truths of um, that can solve the problem of solipsism, that can account for truth, knowledge, morality, the, uh, the induction, and the laws of logic.